hand, just hand one today. Okay. When we were kids, our boards were made in the 50s because we rode used boards, and they were pretty good boards, better than the 60s boards. And so I had those boards, and then we surfed with Greeno from Santa Barbara, and we all knew him and surfed, and I got to surf with him and watch him ride his spoons and all the velos. And so I, well, really, that's been my main influence, I'd say, is Greeno. And so every board I put those basic ingredients that would be from the, the Greeno experience. You know, you put a Greeno fit on, on, on any surfboard and it'll work better. So guys say, well, when did you make your first board? Well, it was 64 and I had already built a board, but mainly I just did repairs. Joe Quig came to the same conclusion as Simmons with hydrodynamic, you would have bow forward and rocker forward, and then as you come back, the board flattens out, the rail drops down, and the rocker straightens out. So it creates lift. They're all, it was just simple. And so Simmons and Quig and Greeno were the three guys that all independently came up with that. So, okay, here's the basic formula six of us in Santa Barbara. There was Bradbury and uh, Duncan at Wilderness and um, Yader and Al Merrick and myself. You know, we were, we were like the main board builders. That was the shop, that my favorite shop in Santa Barbara in the 70s when I partnered up with Yader. And I ran the shop and did all the glass. I had my crew do all the glassing and he just shaped. <laughs> There's KP. <laughs> He's going so much faster than that guy. <laughs> but we were already doing these Australian type fuller outline round tails in the mid 70s. And here's Kirk and I in 75. We were total longboard hounds. We lived to surf small waves. When it was, and no one else did it. We were riding our stubbies when the waves were good. In the old days, it used to be that if a guy made a thousand boards, you know, you, you, you were really on the, on the map. And then it was, well, some of those production shapers at Hobie did 10,000. And that was like, that was ridiculous. Those guys are just mass production. And now, now that they, that's like an entry level number is 10,000. That's just kind of what my feeling is about it. But I think that a good hand shaping kind of a guy can't do more than four or five hundred a year if you do them all from scratch. So you just do the math from there. However many years you shape, you can't do more than three, three to five hundred a year. So it'd take ten years to do three thousand boards. So ten thousand to me is, is still a big number. Mm -hmm. And I think guys that have really done that many, most of them are machined. Me, I'm guessing uh, two or three thousand. That's just a guess. I've never tried to figure it out, and not a lot. But when I did it for a living, you'd make two or three hundred a year was a lot, because yeah. there weren't many surfers. Mm 